Hello and welcome to the channel. Here is another problem from ARML computation year 2022. So S is the sum of inverse cubes of all positive integers. Then we leave only the terms corresponding to the numbers which are divisible neither by 2 nor by 3 and get the new sum denoted by letter T. It is required to compute the ratio S over T. The sum of inverse cubes is really finite since each inverse cube doesn't exceed corresponding inverse square. We know the exact value of the sum of inverse squares. This is a famous Bayesian problem solved by Leonard Euler in 1735, who found that the sum of inverse squares is pi squared over 6, whereas the sum of inverse cubes cannot be expressed in elementary terms. However, this problem doesn't ask you to find the values of S or T. It only asks to find the ratio of those. Consider that while solving the problem. So please pause the video and do it. Both methods I am going to show in this video uses the principle attributed either to the French sculptor Auguste Rodin or to famous Michelangelo Buonarroti. You take the whole block of stone, in this case it will be the sum of all inverse positive cubes S, and chip away the parts you don't need. At start we chip away the sum of inverse cubes of even numbers, the multiples of 2. So we find the sum of inverse positive even cubes, denoted by letter E for even. Quite obviously, each denominator is a multiple of 2 cubed. So let's factor out 1 over 2 cubed. This leaves in the brackets the sum of inverse cubes of all positive integers, which is our S, while 2 cubed is of course 8. Thus we find out that E equals 1 eighth times S. Now we can find the sum of inverse odd cubes, denoted with the letter O for odd. To do that, we subtract E from S. Substituting the expression for E gives value 7 eighths times S for O. Next, we need to cut out the inverse cubes of odd multiples of 3 that is, the numbers not divisible by 2, but divisible by 3. So we need to find the sum of inverse cubes of odd multiples of 3, denoted with the letter u. Why u? Because I like u. This time each denominator is a multiple of 3 cubed. So we naturally factor out 1 over 3 cubed, and look what we've got in the brackets. This is the sum of inverse cubes of all odd numbers, our beloved O, while 3 cubed is another remarkable number, 27. So U equals 1 over 27 times O. Finally, we can find our cherished number T, sum of inverse cubes for odd non multiples of 3. It is just O minus U. And we substitute the value of U to find the T equals 26 over 27 times O. But we need T in terms of S. So we substitute the expression for O in terms of S. And find that T equals 91 over 108 times s. This means that the ratio t to s is 91 over 108. However, what we are really after is s over t, which is equal to the inverse fraction, 108 over 91. And this is the answer. The problem is solved. However, the official author's solution happened to be shorter than mine. 
therefore I feel obliged to show it as well. For an arbitrary integer n, we take the sum of inverse cubes of multiples of n, denoted as s with index n. Every denominator of the sum is a multiple of n cubed. So this time we factor out 1 over n cubed, and get in the brackets the sum of all positive inverse cubes, known as s. Thus, s sub n equals 1 over n cubed, times s. What is remarkable about this approach, it allows to find the expression for t straight away. So we take the whole sum s and subtract the sum of inverse cubes of even numbers, that is s sub 2. Then we subtract the sum of inverse cubes for the multiples of 3, that is s sub 3. However, the terms corresponding to the numbers divisible by both 2 and 3 are subtracted twice. Since 2 and 3 are coprime, a number is a multiple of both 2 and 3, if and only if it is a multiple of 6. Therefore, in order to compensate the unnecessary subtraction, we have to add s sub 6. The next step is substituting all indexed s's with the non-indexed s, using the formula for s sub n. Next, we factor out s and at the same time find the values of cubes, perform operations on common fractions, and as it was expected, get the same result as with the previous method. Again, the ratio s to t is 108 over 91, so we got the same answer as previously. The only difference is that now it's the end.